Hello again, my lovelies, and welcome back to another review from Through the Eyes of NG, where we're trying to cover 101 films over 12 months to raise money for We Are With You and the Shawbury Village Players. Uh, once again, just a little update to begin with, we have now raised £280 for these, these charities, so hopefully next week I'm going to get that money split and sent out to the two of them. So we've still got about four films left to be nominated. So, if you still want to donate, drop us a few quid, name a film, I'll take a look at it. Some I'll like, some I'll hate, some I'll be really confused by and won't be able to make my mind up. So today we're looking at The Thirteenth Warrior. Now, The Thirteenth Warrior was released in 1999. It was directed by John McTiernan and Michael Crichton. It was written by William Wisher and Warren Lewis and was based on the book Eaters of the Dead by Michael Crichton. It was starring Antonio Banderas as Ahmed Fadlan, Dennis Strohoy as Herger, Vladimir Kulich as Bulueth, Tony Curran as Weath, and Diane Ven Venora as Queen Welloui. Storyline-wise, a man having fallen in love with the wrong woman is sent by the Sultan himself on a diplomatic mission to a distant land as an ambassador. Stopping at a Viking village port to restock on supplies, he finds himself unwittingly embroiled in a quest to banish a mysterious threat in a distant Viking land. Okay, let's cover the most obvious thing first and just get it out of the way. It's bullshit that the lead role is being played by Antonio Banderas. Listen to the name of the lead character, the titular 13th warrior, Ahmed Fadlan. The role should be played by someone Arabic, not a Spaniard. And yes, I know this kind of casting decisions isn't anything new. Uh, in Gods of Egypt, quite recently, we had Christian Bale playing an Egyptian. There are plenty of actors in the world who can play these roles and sticking a well-known white guy in a role like this is, oh, it just boils my blood. But we've covered it now, let's move on. But we should probably acknowledge that the production of the film was a mess. It was released two years after it was originally completed as Eaters of the Dead. Uh, test screenings showed the film to be barely watchable, so the author of the original novel, Michael Crichton, took over and did a number of reshoots and renamed the film The Thirteenth Warrior. Now, it's perhaps not essential information, but it certainly explains a lot of the problems the film had. Uh, we've had similar situations where two directors with different styles work on a project with Justice League recently, where you can see, you watch the original trailer for Justice League, and you can see the stunning difference between that and the final product, which was completed by... He Who Shall Not Be Named. Now, The 13th Warrior, in theory, should pretty much be a perfect film for me. A supernatural horror film involving Vikings. Three of my favourite things. And, in part, the film delivers because it's very much a men-on-a-mission story, with more of a hint than The Seventh Samurai. However, it's also deeply flawed and far far too short uh we'll rather than looking at the positives and then going on to the negatives we'll flip it a little bit this time we'll look at the negatives first uh john mctiernan is probably as a director best known for one of the best action films ever made which was die hard uh, if you watch the action sequences in die hard they're all really well choreographed and they make logical sense we can see that john mcclain has to get from point a to point b and the obstacle getting in the way of this, other than the two Germans shooting guns at him, is he has to go through all this broken glass on the floor and he has no shoes on. Plenty of setup, well executed scene. Uh, the idea of big battle sequences with Vikings fighting with cannibals ticks all kinds of boxes for me. And the problem we have with these action sequences, apart from one, which is in slow motion, is they're really hectic and it's often difficult to focus on what's actually going on. Uh, whilst the actors do look really good in their other costume design here is top-notch, the rushed and bitty action sequences 
a really quick, really confusing, and also really tame as well. There isn't much in the way of gore effects, which you'd kind of expect from a film like this, other than an early sequence where the existence of the corpse eaters, uh, we never find out exactly what they are, is revealed, which has plenty of the red stuff splattered everywhere and severed limbs all over the place. But that's pretty much the only time, apart from like the odd beheading every now and then, that we really see. And the battles should have been really impressive, but are a massive letdown. And this is a problem because the film, for whatever reason, makes the decision to focus on the battles and the action rather than the characters, which is a bit of a black mark against the film as a whole. Because we don't really know who the Vikings are in the film. And the film sits at a very tight 98 minutes. And it doesn't give us the time to actually get to know the characters, really. I didn't really know their names going through the film. It was more like, oh, there's the one with the tattoo on his face. There's the Scottish one. There's the one who's good with a bow. That's the one who's mates with Antonio Banderas. That's the one who doesn't like Antonio Banderas, and he's the leader. You don't really get to know them, so you don't care when they inevitably start being bumped off as the story goes on. And, yeah, a couple of them get to know Antonio Banderas, and one of them, who keeps referring to him as a little brother, for some reason, get the more time, and you get more familiar with those characters. But they are the exception rather than the rule. And almost it feels like the film's kind of been hacked to the bone in the editing suite. And we've lost a lot of valuable character development. And it's a shame because the character development we do get is really good. These are really good actors who are playing interesting characters. And there's a real sense of this whole Band of Brothers theme going on. And I've got to wonder as well whether the film was restructured to focus more on Banderas, because he was becoming a massive star at this time in the States. He was already a massive star in his native Spain and had actually been arrested by the Spanish police for making films that went against the cultural tide at the time. So this lack of development is to the detriment of the film as a whole. And it does honestly feel like the film started with the action sequences and the monsters first and then built the rest of the story around the action sequences rather than using the action sequences to further the plot. And it's a shame because there is a lot of potential here. The inspiration for the film doesn't just come from the Michael Crichton book, but it also comes from Beowulf, which is a fantastic source of material for a film. And I've, when I was thinking about it, there's only one film that's adapted the story of Beowulf that I've seen, which was that really strange motion capture one with Ray Winston and Angelina Jolie. And I, it must, I don't obviously know what happened with the filming of the film, but I would be interested to see what the original vision was before Michael Crichton got his hands on it. And I'm guessing that might have been the time when the focus went more on the fighting rather than a compelling storyline or perhaps finishing off this really bizarre side plot about the son of the king that our heroes have gone to save, who's really suspicious of our, the motive of our heroes, question mark, because he thinks they're coming in to steal the throne and it just doesn't go anywhere. And indeed, the, lo the fate of the locals after the final battle isn't really explained in any way. I, I didn't hate the time I spent with the 13th warrior. Uh, quite the opposite, actually. I actually wish there was more of it. But I was really frustrated with the film because it could have quite so easily been so much more. And again, the idea of a supernatural horror involving ghouls and vampires, uh, Vikings, not vampires, <laughs> get vampires, uh, with big epic battles, this sense of brotherhood, which reminded me more than a little of how good the Hobbit films could have been. Uh, but ultimately, it just let me down. It, it missed the mark. It, there wasn't enough. If it's on, if you just happen to be channel hopping and you see it's on, you can, I can think of worst ways to spend an hour and a half, but I can think of lots of better ways as well. So that's The 13th Warrior. Uh, next on the list, we've got The Tommyknockers. And then Laura drew out a couple more films for me last night. 
So after we've done Tommy Knockers, we will be boring myself half to death by watching a Star Trek The Motion Picture. And then once we've finished The Motion Picture, we'll be moving on to The Meg, which is a shark film, which looks awful. And I'm really kind of looking forward to that one. So that's it. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, subscribe so you get notified when I do more of the reviews. Share it around. Give it a like. Throw in a few comments, work me into the YouTube YouTube algorithm, and we'll be back hopefully next... I know I keep saying I'll be back next week before a week today to do another review, but it doesn't quite happening because my job is hectic as hell. So, um, yep, yeah, hopefully we'll be back next week with uh, Tommy Knockers when I finally get around to watching the damn thing. Okay, thanks very much for watching. See you next time.